Hi, I'm Michael Leiden. Today, my wife Ellen Mandel and I live in Manhattan's East Village, and we've lived here many years. But 40 years ago, I was an eager young reporter in San Francisco, covering civil rights and the hippie movement and music scene for Newsweek, and then the first issues of Rolling Stone. I even went on tour with the Rolling Stones and played Baccarat at Vegas with Mick and Keith. A few months ago, a German news team came to our house to ask me about the summer of love in those long gone psychedelic days. To jog my memory, I look back at my old bound copies of Rolling Stone. Here's an edited version of the interview. The amazing thing about Rolling Stone was it caught on very, very quickly. The idea was, let's start a magazine, because we were all writing, we all loved music, and we were all very, very excited by the music and the cultural ideas going on at the time, included the fight for civil rights and student power at Berkeley right across the bay. And the fact that we were young and inexperienced didn't matter. Jan Wenner was a very, very bright and very, very ambitious young man. He had a real concept of what he wanted to accomplish and he worked very, very hard. We didn't have any trouble getting access or get to the Rolling Stones, to Jimi Hendrix, to Jim Morrison, to Bob Dylan. They wanted to be covered by Rolling Stone. So if you went to interview uh, Janis Jopp, she was talking about stuff that people would read and learn from. If she would say, so I said, the hell with wearing a girdle. <laughs> Hundreds and thousands of girls would think, all right, I'm on the moment wear a girdle. Jimi Hendrix, I interviewed him once. A very, very nice, gentle person. I think he was a troubled person, but a masterful musician. Yeah. Soulful, soulful artist. We were all just young people, excited by music, excited by life. Everybody knew the names of all the people in the bands. They were excited by the ideas. When I would think of the 60s, the most memorable part of it was that it was an intense conversation going around all, across, all around the world being conducted by very, very intelligent, daring people. John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Mick Jagger, Keith Richard, Janis Joplin. We got ideas through the music about how to live. Bob Dylan, he said, he not busy being born is busy dying. So that's a profound idea. So you hear that, I mean, myself speaking, and I, I realize I'm just Bob Dylan's age. We're just two fellows growing up in America. So if he says that, I took that as a challenge mm -hmm. to myself. Well, I don't want to be one of these old folks getting old and dying. I want to live, so I'm going to keep be busy being born. I'm going to keep experimenting. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. The Beatles put out Let It Be as an album. So the Rolling Stones put out Let It Bleed as an album. So mm -hmm. there was this sense of you say one thing, I say another. So we were all involved in an international debate and discussion about how to live. What were we going to do about war? What were we going to do about Vietnam? What were we going to do about some people aren't equal in America? What are we going to do about my parents say I've got to just go, go work for a corporation and I want to wear flowers and I want to dance and I want to make love or let's say if I'm gay, if I can be, you know, do I have to hide that anymore? You could take a whole new attitude towards life and it really changed how people thought. People grow up, you get children, you settle down, you've got to have, got to have a job you realize some of the things your parents struggled through. I think myself and a lot of people I know who were involved are still trying in whatever way they can to turn things toward the better. And, mm -hmm. and to some extent, I think we succeeded. Yeah.